Hi, and welcome to this section of the Probability and Statistics Tutor. And in this section, we're going to hit the topic of the uh, normal probability density, also called the normal probability distribution, okay? So when something is named normal, okay, usually it means that uh, something is used quite a bit, so much so that it's actually called the normal distribution or the normal something or other, and that's exactly what's going on here. The normal uh, distrib uh, density here, probability density is what we'll talk about, and I'll tell you what a density is here in a second. Also think of it as a distribution function, that's just fine. Um, that thing is used everywhere. It's, it's, it's everywhere, it's used uh, extensively in all areas of math and science, and it's something that we see in everyday life. It's kind of like, almost like the sine wave in the sense that, you know, you learn about the sine function in trig class or in algebra or whatever, and you look around you in nature and sine waves are every, they're everywhere. They're in the the light that's hitting your, 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 eye, your eye right now, the electromagnetic wave is a sine wave, and it's just everywhere. And so the sine wave is just one of those things that's ever present in nature. The normal um, probability density is really kind of the same way. If you take a large body of data, a lot of times that data is going to be normally distributed. And once I teach you what normally distributed means, and it's just another function, just like any of these others that we've studied, um, basically it's what it really boils down to is a lot of information out there and a lot of natural phenomena just naturally for whatever reason follow the normal density and they're distributed uh, in a bell shape kind of like a bell curve that you probably heard about that is the normal distribution okay so before we get too far down the weeds there let's go and back up a little bit and let me ease you into what the normal probability distribution is what the function is and when we're going to apply it and use it and then also we're going to have to talk a little bit about those tables because we're going to end up using the tables in the back of the book quite a bit to solve these kinds of problems so first before we go into this thing called a probability density just back up the truck a little bit to what you already know the probability distribution remember probability distribution all it is it's a function you put a number in a random variable and what you get out is the probability that that random variable uh, was going to happen. Could be, for instance, the random variable, like the one I like to use a lot, is it, it could be the number of eggs a chicken lays in a day. Zero, one, two, three, or four. I could have a probability for that, for each number of eggs, that that chicken's going to lay that many eggs, and I can graph it and, and draw a little bar chart, and we're all comfortable with that, I think. And uh, that's the basic idea of what a probability uh, distribution is. So let's go ahead and refresh our memory with what we already know. Okay, so x. Uh, is here and we have f of x and let's say for whatever reason I'm doing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 okay and what if my probability distribution looks something like this okay it goes up a little bit higher a little bit higher here a little bit lower a little bit lower, a little bit lower, okay? And of course, you know, we have probabilities that go up the side, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, okay? Now, one thing that you should remember and that you need to remember that's very, very important that we've talked about before is that for all of these probability distribution functions, one overarching thing is always true. If you sum up over all x, all of these probabilities, okay, Actually, let me go ahead and write f of x since that's what we call our distribution function. They must all sum to 1. All that means is in your sample space, these are the, we're saying when we draw this that the only number of, let's say this is the number of eggs a chicken can lay in a day, you can only lay 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Let's just say it's biologically impossible to lay more than 5. I actually have no idea what the number of eggs a chicken can lay, but let's just pretend the maximum biologically possible is 5 in a day, okay? So that's why it only goes up to here. So we've assumed that we've included all of sample space, so every probability is defined here, and because we've included all the possible answers and we've given them a probability, and all probabilities go from 0 to 1, if we've covered all the cases, then if you add all these probabilities together, they should all equal 1. That is a fundamental fact. And furthermore, I'm going to clue you in on something else. What you've kind of been doing without really needing to do it is, when you say that this probability, let's say uh, this one right here, between 0.1 and 0.2, this is roughly 0 0.15, right? What you've sort of been doing is you've been, even though it's not really been that important, what you've really been saying is the area of this little rectangle is 0 0.15. The area of this rectangle is, is bigger because it's higher the area of this one is shorter, the area of this one is smaller, and the area of this one is smaller. So what we've been saying all along, even though I haven't really pointed it out to you, is that when you draw this little histogram like that, the area of these rectangles really corresponds to the probability. 
okay, of that particular random variable. It just kind of makes sense. The, the taller the rectangle, the more area it is, or it has, and so the more area that is under each one of these things, the more um, the, the, the higher the probability, okay? That's all I'm really saying. Nothing magical about it. It's exactly what that is, okay? So furthermore, because all these probabilities that we add together, if they must equal one, then let me clue you in on something else. If you were to take the area of all of these things, okay, and if you drew it right, which I didn't draw it right, if you add up the area of this and the area of this and the area of this and this and this and this, they would all add up to one because I'm not, I'm not doing any mathematical tricks here. All I'm saying is that the area here corresponds to its probability. The area here corresponds to its probability. The area here corresponds to its probability and so on. So because all the probabilities add up to one, all of the areas add up to one. So you could sort of make the generalization that the area, the